right? There's two lines that are tangent to this function and parallel to this line. So I'll show you what they look like because I've done this before, but x cubed looks like this, right? I forgot what this line looks like. I'd have to think about it. Um, when, uh, what's that? Oh. Yeah, y equals 12x minus 5. Yeah, if you solve for y, it would get, well, oh, y equals, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah, you just add the y over. Smart. I was doing, I was like subtracting this and subtracting this and then, yeah, okay. So, uh, smart. Yeah, so if you solve for y, you would get that. That's beneficial to do, actually. So when you plug in 0, you're at 5. So you're up over here. So it probably looks uh, something, something like this. I don't know, something like this, right? And then so you want the equations of the line that are tangent to this and parallel to this. So they're going to look something like this. Right. These will be these will be the answers, right? Because they're parallel to this line. You don't have to draw the picture though, right? You can just do it without the picture. So you need the lines that are tangent to this and parallel to this. So solution. So what do we know about uh, parallel lines? They have the same what? Do you remember? Slope. Same slope. Yeah. So parallel lines have the same slope. So we start with that. So what is the slope? of this line up here? 12. 12. Yeah, very good. So, oh, it's already really cool. Like, this is a great problem. So the slope of this line is 12, right? What is the slope of the function? What is that called? The derivative. So the derivative is the slope of the function, but the derivative should be equal to the slope of the line because they're parallel, right? The tangent line has to be parallel to this line. So the tangent line has to have the same slope as this line. So the tangent line has to have a slope of 12. Therefore, the derivative must be 12. So you take, oh, you need a hint here. We're going to cheat here. I'm sorry. So we're going to use some things that we are not supposed to use. <laughs> Thanks, Austin, for asking, because this helps us. You saved the day. When you take this derivative, you bring the 3 down. So you get 3x squared. So again, on a test, I would give you this, right? Otherwise, you got to do it the long way. It's like no fun, right? You have an x cubed. That's Pascal's triangle. It's no fun. And so what does this have to be equal to in this problem? 12, 12 right? Because the tangent line is parallel to this line. So the tangent line has to have the same slope as this line. So the tangent line must have a slope of 12. This is the slope of the tangent line, and it must be equal to 12. So now you can use this to solve for x. So x squared is equal to 4. It's a really beautiful problem. And then when you take the square root, what do you, what do you get, A? Plus or minus. Plus or minus. Yeah, really important. You get a plus or minus 2. That always happens when you take the square root of a variable squared, OK? You always get a plus or minus, OK, always. If you just, if you just have the square root of 4, that's 2, OK? That's 2. But if you have x squared equals 4, you do get, you do get a plus or minus. Any questions so far? Yeah, yeah, Logan. Why do we do that? Why do we do what? The x squared equals 4. Oh, because oh, oh, we we're trying to solve for x, I guess. I mean, what else can we do, right? Oh. Yeah, yeah, so why do we do this? So we have the slope equal to 12. It's like the only thing we can do now is maybe solve for, for, for x. Yeah, and what happens? That's a good question. Why do we do this? So now we have the x values. So these are the x values for our tangent line, right? So we have the slope, which is 12, and we have our x values. So we have our slope, we have our x values. What's missing to find the tangent lines? What else do we need? The what values? The y values, good, the y values, right? Because remember, to use the formula, we need an x and a y, right? So again, the tangent line is parallel to this, so the tangent line must have a slope of 12. So you set these equal to each other. Logan had a really good question. Why do we do this? Well, at this point, we have the slope, right? So we just need the points. So to find the points, we have to find the x's and the y's, right? So we divide by 3, we find the x's. Now that we have the x's, we can find the y's. So we do each one individually. It's not that bad. So when x is 2, so when x is 2, we'll get a tangent line, right? So when x is 2, we have to find the y value of the tangent line. So we plug it into the function, right? Because if you think about the picture, the function and the tangent line share a point, right? They share a y value. So you take this and you plug it into the original function to get the y value.
So f of 2 is 2 cubed, which is 8. 8, 8, 8, 8, mm -hmm. 8. So I'm going to write it as an ordered pair. So the ordered pair here is x, comma, y. All right, so it would be 2, comma, 8. Mm -hmm. 2, comma, 8. 2, comma, 8. So this is our x1. This is our y1. And so now you use your formula, right, your point-slope formula. It's called point-slope because it has a point and a slope. Um, right, there's the point-slope formula. Right, see, point slope formula. I have to know that because I teach college algebra, so I have to know why it's so I, so I, so I don't forget it. Right, because there's slope intercept and point slope. You were in my class, yeah, because this one, just extra life knowledge, this one's called the slope intercept formula, right, because it's got a slope and an intercept. Yeah. Point slope, just in case you didn't know that, but yeah. So. All right, so plug everything in. So y minus uh, y1, which, which is 8, 8. And then m is 12. Then we have x minus the number 2, minus the number 2, minus the number 2. All right, let's keep going. So we have y minus 8. We have 12x, 12x, 12 times 2. 24, 24, and then we uh, add, add 8, add 8, so plus 8, plus 8, so we get y equals, uh, oh, is it 16? Okay, that's it, thank God for calculating, oh, yeah, we, uh, yeah, you can, don't forget your calculator, it helps, I guess, you know, yeah. The homework accepts it without you distributing the slope. Oh. You don't want that on the exam. Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any questions on this one? This is kind of like a, a little bit harder than regular calculus. All right, let's do the next one. So for x, oh, when, when, sorry, when x is negative 2 now, right? Because we did x equals 2. So now we'll do when x equals negative 2, right? When x equals negative 2. Um, and then, we, again, we just go back to the original one, right? We plug it in here. So f of negative 2, so f of negative 2 is, uh, let's see, negative 2 cubed, which is uh, negative, negative 8, negative 8. So I'm going to write the ordered pair again, just as a, you know, formality. So it's x comma y, so it's negative 2 comma negative 8. And that's our x1, y1. I forgot this was in the homework. Like I, I saw it, and I'm like, oh wow. Like I think this might be the hardest one. I mean, there's some that are more annoying, but we'll talk about those. This is like conceptually, this is probably the hardest one in the homework. Then we use our formula again. So y minus y1 is m x minus x1. M x x minus x1. Mm. Right, and then same thing, plug everything in. This time it'll be y plus 8. Everyone see why it's plus? Because it's minus and minus. Minus and minus. And then here we have m. m was, what was m? 12. 12, yeah, 12. And then x plus 2. Yeah, plus 2. Distribute, distribute to 12, so we get y plus 8. Uh, 12x plus 24, subtract the 8, oh that's cool, 12x plus 16, but they're almost the same, right, it's minus 16 and, and plus 16, yeah, yeah, I don't know, I think so, but I don't know, I don't want to say anything, I mean I should know that, right, so <laughs> I want to say yes, but I don't know, right, uh, I mean, in this, in this particular case, no, not always, not that's not always true for all parallel lines, but in this particular example, yes. Right, because, look, ha, so like these lines, John, are parallel, <laughs> right? So just, they just have different y-intercepts. It's just kind of cool here because the intercepts are opposites, right? That's kind of unique. It's kind of cool. I was like, whoa, 